Hey everybody, how's it going? This is our Hunter One here, and today I am going to attempt to talk about a little bit of a controversial topic out there, and it's the topic of gyros. So, why am I looking at my little uh, car here? Well, this is the first of many visual aids I'm going to try to use here to help explain the concept and what's going on here. So, here I've got my little car here. This is one of my son's uh, little Matchbox cars, and to explain. Well, first of all, we're going to look at the question of what is a gyro and why do you need it anyway? So the problem that everyone's trying to solve is when you're cruising down the road at high rates of speed, and especially if you have a, a two-wheel drive car, what will often happen is the rear wheels might lose traction, and that could be from you, um, you hit a patch of dirt, you hit something on the road, and the rear wheels might want to spin out or you could hit a bump on a road or something and the front wheels might want to veer off course now the problem is that well if you're a skilled driver you can say well hey i i, I have fast reaction time i got skills i can compensate and for a lot of guys they can and they do a really good job but what happens is is that if you are a little off in your game or your reaction time is a little bit off or if you know just just happens that you know the stars line up in the wrong way you could find yourself in a situation where you blink and the car goes off it loses control and next thing you know you're falling off a cliff not literally but figuratively but you get the idea you know it doesn't take very much to offset the car and then just like what happened to me in my um in one of my first uh, 70 mile an hour attempts the rear end does something weird the car spins out you lose control and then you've lost several hundred if not thousands of dollars you know in an incident so you're here you got on the screen here if it focuses these are some screenshots that came from some of my uh well actually this came from my 70 mile an hour um or i should say my um spring testing video from last year now in this case this is slate shooting by at about 69 miles an hour 68 point something and it looks like it's you know like he's pretty stable you know, but however you know just looking at the picture i can see that my wings deflected quite a bit which means that there's a lot of downforce which means the rear is being pushed down pretty well so that's good however you know if i look up here at the picture of dizzy dizzy looks like he's okay but then when i get this image of this other angle you know you see that the front wheels are actually off the ground at some point so what was going on here is that the car was being jostled around as it was driving through and it just so happened that it was at low enough speed that the car was stable so it was able to you know correct itself and uh get back true uh and i didn't even notice that the car was having a problem but if i was going a little bit faster air would have gotten underneath here and the car would have flew off the road so if i am paranoid or if I'm just you know protective and I want to give my car a little bit of an edge so that it can compensate for things faster than I can a gyro is a great option for you because essentially the gyro will step in and the gyro will give an input to correct for the instability much faster than a human being can so let's illustrate a little bit what's going on here so you see in this slot chart right here, what happens when you have a gyro, you give your car a system input, and that's, you know, you use your controller, you turn the wheel to a certain angle, and that control input goes in through your car. So now you're driving down the road, you say, you're telling the car, I want to go straight, and the car is trying to go straight. So inside the gyro, there's a sensor, that's a, a gyroscope, a literal device that is sensing if the car is trying to rotate. So it has, you know, modern cars re like full-size cars use these they call them yaw sensors yaw is you know the twisting motion back and forth around the car center so when the yaw sensor which is a gyro a gyroscope of some form some form or another um when it senses the car is moving in a direction that it wasn't commanded that sensor input then goes back through the system it gets compared to a, a reference source and that gives you an error. The error then goes into a controller, and that's an electronic black box that has control logic in it that says, okay, I'm trying to go straight like this. The car is trying to turn, and that could be you hit a bump, that could be anything. 
but it will now put in a control input, which in the case is turning the wheels to try to bring the car back in line. That controller output goes into the system, that system you know, and then that goes into the car, and then this process goes back over again. That's called a control loop. And in this case, it's a closed loop control loop, which means that you're actually sensing what's going on in the car, and based upon this, whatever the sensors say, the controller will automatically adjust everything and keep the car trying to match the input that you're giving. So you are commanding the car, but or you're telling the car what you want it to do. And the car is now figuring out what it needs to do in order to keep doing what you asked it to. So I know there's some controversy out there about, you know, with the gyroscope, are you driving a car or the car driving itself? And the answer is kind of yes, both. So you are commanding it, but the car is aggressively trying to keep up with the commands that you've given it. And by the way, I stole this here from Wikipedia. So, you know, you, there's actually a much better description about control law on there if you're curious and you want to track it under, under the surface. And this is just a, a very broad simplification of what a closed loop control loop looks like. Um, so, so what does that look like in practice? So, like I described, you have your car going down the road and here you get some sort of disturbance. And that disturbance now wants to send the car sideways. So the controller will now step in and well, the sensors tell the car, I just twisted, something is going on here. Now that input goes to the controller and the controller says, okay, I need to correct. So I need to turn the wheels to try to bring this thing back in order. So now that control input causes the system to rotate. But oh look, it overcompensated. So now the yaw sensor says, okay, I shot, I went too far, I overshot. So then it goes back and recalculates and says, oh, now I need to turn the wheels this way to try to bring it back in. But it puts in a slightly smaller input because its error is smaller. So now that causes the car to come back in line. And once it detects that it's back where it's supposed to be, now it turns the wheels back straight. And you keep going down the road, fat, dumb, and happy, not even realizing necessarily that anything bad ever happened. And the car just continues to go along down this merry way. So, again, your input, you're holding the, the wheel perfectly straight. And the car is trying to hold straight. And the sensor output goes through, sees that things are going off the rails. That air signal goes back to the controller. And the controller does everything that it needs to do in order to keep the car matching what you told it to do. So it's a great system, but there are some of the guys out there who feel that, yeah, it's cheating though, because you're giving the car an unfair advantage. Now, I kind of go on, um, I'm on the fence on this one right here. And uh, before I really kind of jump off, this is a very simplified picture control loop. And there's lots of ways to implement these. And I studied these in school. And, um, you know, I'm not, this is a topic for a much broader video. However, you know, just, you know, kind of, if you really want to jump into it, you know, there's lots of different types of controllers. This is called a PID controller. Um, and the point here is that there's a lot of conflict math underneath the surface here that explains, you know, how the input that the or how I should say the controller's output can actually use some pretty complex math to look at the instantaneous position the change in position as a function of time so the, the velocity change so you could say this is the angular speed of how it's changing and then also looking at the angular acceleration of how fast things are changing and based upon how all those things are fit together and then and combine different control inputs all into one signal to try to keep everything in control. So, yeah, that's a topic for later. But, you know, there's a lot of complex math that goes in underneath the surface on a fairly simple device to help keep everything aligned. Now, to 
uh, let me go ahead and jump to something from uh, the Spectrum website. And this is just another illustration showing pretty much the same thing, where with this is talking about Spectrum's AVC, or Advanced Vehicle Control System, and which is basically a system. It's a, it's a, it's a gyro, but it goes a little bit beyond that as well. Because in here, you can see the illustration where the vehicle is going down the road and it's trying to spin out and it uh if this went to its logical conclusion this thing would just spin so now you turn abc on and look what happens now when it detects that things are spinning out it's turning the wheels to counter the spin and bring things back in line just like in my powerpoint but the abc system goes a step further because on top of that it also has what's called throttle management and that system actually will combine the it will also, in addition to just giving you steering input, it will sense when the vehicle is getting ready to fly off the road. So basically, it senses that it you're losing the ability to go straight, and it will actually turn off the throttle. So I'll turn this thing off, and it will see that here it goes in, and the, it, you lose traction. It doesn't have the ability to go around the corner anymore just with uh, the steering. So it will actually, when it feels that I'm going too fast, I can't, um, I can't control anymore, it literally slams brakes. And that slams brakes scrubs enough speed so that you now are now slow enough to maintain your corner. So it keeps everything in control. So if you want to protect your car and you care more about protecting your car than showing your absolute skill systems like a gyro or an AVC or AVC they're perfect for you however for those who uh, you know I guess you could say uh, for certain elite uh, drivers out there who want to you know show that they are the creme de la creme the best of the best you know they want to prove that they can handle their cars without needing to resort to these types of systems so for those guys you know a gyro system or ADC type of system you know is cheating so this is you know this isn't a hot topic for debate I'm sure that the, there's gonna be plenty of comments on this but ultimately I think it really boils down to you know the rules of the game that you're playing if you you know i think that there's room enough for both schools of thought because let's be real <laughs> these things represent a pretty significant investment i mean my cars i know represent a large chunk of money and i know that the cars out there who are clocking over 100 miles an hour for example represent some very large amounts of money to their owners so i know no one wants to see their car turn into a pile of useless garbage on the other hand you know you go big or go home so for some guys that's being able to go and find a knife edge you know finding the edge of the razor and walking on it is the whole point of the game so anything that gets in the way of you and your ability to find your personal best you know is just getting in the way so yeah you know, I, I think that there's room in the community for both schools of thought but you know it just comes down to whose game are you playing you know so without missing any names i know that there's strong uh, there's very strong feelings on both sides of the aisle i don't know how helpful this vehicle would be because i'm kind of walking down the middle i know for my cars i'm personally deciding to go no gyro uh but also well i'm going no gyro but i'm i, I can't claim to be completely clean because going back to my earlier picture here you know, there's more than one way to get directional stability. And you see here the slave, and I talked about this before. This little wing here on the back, my uh, my rear spoiler, it acts in a lot of ways as a gyro does. What happens is air hits the spoiler and it causes the spoiler, the force causes it to try to pull the car back in line. If it veers off again, same thing happens. Now, it's not the same level of effectiveness as a, uh, a gyro or an ABC, but it does keep the pointy end into the wind. Now, if something hits the front and that causes the front to go off, that does, that's not gonna really do a whole lot for me because if I go this way, 
Well, I mean, it, it will try to push it back in line, but if my front wheels are, you know, being pulled off in a way, it could get in a situation like on this guy right here, where it just doesn't have enough authority to fix it and then we'll just fly off. So, an, a, a full ADC control system, which is basically a stability control for your RC car, you know, will be much more effective than keeping everything in line. However, you know, yeah, part of my goal is to, you know, try to figure out, try to make the car neutral, which means have the car basically self-correct without having to do resort to extra heroics. So if I can get a nice neutral car that, you know, I hit a bump and it self-corrects and it kind of keeps itself going without having to have an electronic input, I think I fall within um, the... Well, I, I think I keep it clean. Um, so, so that's Slay's philosophy. Dizzy, on the other hand, to get the goals, I'm planning to go with him. I think I'm gonna have to lose the spoiler altogether because that's just too much drag. So Dizzy's just gonna have to be neutrally stable without any, uh, at least any over the top aerodynamic help. And I'm gonna talk about that in a future video. So you, you'll see that unraveling here or being unveiled here very shortly. So. I hope this was helpful to people. Let me know what you think. If you want me to go more into detail about how control loops work and all that, I'm more than happy to. So you know, just drop me a line, tell me what you're feeling, and we can uh, we can we can continue the debate. All right, guys. So remember to like, comment, subscribe. Uh, remember to check me out on Facebook. Feel free to use the Facebook page for all sorts of. Um, comments uh, just let me know how your projects are doing just or just reach out and give me a holler all right so uh, as always remember the mantra fly fix fly break it fix it do it all over, all over again and i realize that these gyros are a way to help people to not break it so much but so, so i get it i understand you know for me i'm just going to try to keep it clean you know you never know i might end up resorting to a gyro later on but i just want to i love a challenge so i want to see if i can make this thing work all right guys so again remember the mantra fly fix fly break it fix it do it all over again our house 21 signing off peace